The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation of Hard Grants is brought to you by Alive AML Foods Limited, Bahamas Welding and Fire, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, the Deposit Insurance Corporation, the Digital Transformation Unit, Freeport News, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Popeyes, Bronze Electric Motors, and Scotia Bank. Foundation. It's the foundation that's rocking the nation. Howard Grant's the host, got in radio station. 96 right nine, twelve to two is the time. You can call the show or use the text line. Yeah, he educate, he informs. He goes into norm. He's really got that zeal. Plus, he's a child of God. Foundation. Oh. It's the foundation. Oh. Foundation. Oh. So it's the foundation. Foundation. It's the foundation, foundation, oh, so it's the foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation. On this glorious Tuesday afternoon, so happy to be in your company today. We're live and in full effect, happy to be with you. The line's going to be open today. A few things out there. I am grateful, grateful to um, uh, to be in your presence today. It has been a wild few days, <laughs> just to say the absolute least. Um, I don't know how it was for you with the transition of these kids going back to school, but I am grateful. We continue to be able to give God praise for the fact that we could get, because, you know, it's a beautiful thing to have children, right? But after you get them, I mean, talk to me. <laughs> Ah, ah! <laughs> it's the truth. God, tell me the truth. Don't, don't you lie to me. It's a beautiful thing to have these kids on the day of the birth. A beautiful baby. You get little showers for the mummy. People bring you gifts and presents. They want to shower you with blessings. And then the kids continue to grow. And they don't stop. And then they don't calm down. And then they jump all around. And then you try to figure out what is going on. Is it sugar? Is it just natural? What is going on is too much. So we give God praise for all those teachers that have been endowed with a double portion of grace. Talk to me to take care of these children. Amen. Even for a moment, we are grateful to you for being able to pour into our kids with what you have and what you're doing. All those persons who are getting ready to go back to school, I'm grateful to you guys. I know that you are excited that summertime is over. My son keeps saying it, Daddy, the, the, uh, is the vacation going to be over? Remember we talked about the fact that we wanted to do some stuff. Daddy, is this going to be? It's too much. He just needs to calm down. Guys, it's a beautiful day. I want you to be a part of the conversation. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family of islands. 242-300-5720. That's a toll-free call. Or you can hit me up four two two four seven nine six on this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. Um, uh, Mr. Moscow, I'd like to, to if you're listening in, uh, I know we spoke last week. I'd love you to be able to sit with me um, uh, tomorrow if you're available. I'm definitely going to be able to reach out to you uh, on our panel discussion Wednesday. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you be mine? Ladies and gentlemen, thing, I want to be able to shout out a few persons now. Over the course of the past few days, I have uh, attached myself to what they're doing over at Own Bahamas, Own Talks, right? Uh, Own Talks is going to be doing a wonderful series, guys. You can go check it out on my Facebook. You can check it out on my YouTube, YouTube, um, Instagram, rather. You can check it out if you're part of the um, Help Me Howard line, 8270111. Own Talks is going to be bringing in 
uh, Mr. Wonderful. He's going to be coming in here, and uh, I've agreed to be able to kind of be a part of it. I'm happy to be a part of it. I can be absolutely honest with you, and I want all you guys to be a part of it also. I know that you're always kind of um, apprehensive, and uh, you step back at this kind of a concept associated with whether or not you got to pay anything. How much thing costs? Guys, there's absolutely no cost. You can just be able to ensure that you download or scan the barcode so you can be able to get your free tickets. It's going to be at the Grand Ballroom at Bahama at 7 p.m., August 31st, 2023, 7 p.m. And um, Kevin O'Leary, you know him from Shark Tank. He's going to be there uh, diving in and chopping down some stuff. And also you're going to be able to have Terrence McMahon. Terrence McMahon, he's the former CEO and AI innovator. I think this is going to be, he's a visionary educator. I think this is going to be absolutely amazing, especially for the time that we're in right now. This transitional time for growth and development for us to be able to move into another space. And uh, next 50 years located in the country, Own Talks is doing a really, really wonderful thing. Is the Own Talks Foundation, uh, Own Talks Thrive. They have everything there at the Grand Ballroom. Uh, August 31st, we got a few more days before we get into there. Make sure you fill up, pick, up, pick up the information and get your free tickets now. That's Own Talks. I'd also like to say good afternoon to my good, decent people. Down there at Milo B. Butler and Son, my good, decent uh, family, I, I've adopted you. I mean, I don't know whether or not this is the way that adoption works, but this is just what it's going to be. Okay, you're going to have to live with this, and this is how it's going to be. Okay, don't fight me. Alan Butler down there at Milo B. Butler and Sons doing wonderful. Uh, make sure you go check out Butler Mart. Uh, they have great packages for back to school. Great, pa And I say back to school because the children still need to eat, right? So you get your meat packages. You get all these particular things. Go down there. You can pick up something. It's affordable. It's accessible. It is local. It's rich. It's real. It's authentic. They have that sort of an anchor in the community. You want to be a part of what Butler Mart is doing right on Blue Hill Road. You can see them and... Uh, last but definitely not least, I want to be able to say good afternoon to my good friend, Ethric Bo, down there at AFS Insurance and Brokers, and my good, decent people. I told you I got everything uh, laid out with them, and they always give me an opportunity to be able to, and it's, it's really, I don't, I hate to say the word cheap. I know you're, you're creeping into September, I know a great deal of you are born in September, you're looking at your car, uh, it's a whole bubbler, you don't know if you can pay for, talk to me, let's just be very clear. You don't know if you could pay for insurance and pay for this, uh, your license and so forth and so on. You want to put yourself in a position that you reach out to AFS, 341-1-AFS, 341-1-AFS. They can be able to assist you with anything. Number 407, Blue Hill Road, they can be able to take care of you. You can get your car license insured and be able to be on the road. Ball it, doing your thing. It's a beautiful day, guys. Make sure you pick up your Guardian newspaper. The cabinet changes are eminent. Reshuffle expected to be a part of a larger government reset. This is bananas. Can I say that? This is absolutely bananas. I'm watching how the thing evolves. Is it only me or can you see it? I'm watching how the prospect, the concept, the idea after the um, uh, proroguing of the House of Assembly evolves into an agenda. It, it felt like it was a sharp cut. Right, the last and every time we see the you know over the past decade, we've seen the house prorogue. It, it felt sharp, it felt quick, and it didn't feel like there was a an objective, an agenda, a strategy associated with it. And I don't think there was no difference when the House of Assembly dissolved, um, not dissolved, prorogued, right? Prorogued most recently um, uh, when Ryan Pinder. In his capacity as AG took the steps and being able to speak to that particular position of what the government of the Bahamas sought to be able to move towards, it felt very sharp. And now forming an agenda, an objective, and an idea to move in a particular direction. So we wait with bated breath. We wait with bated breath to see whether or not this is sort of the distraction with the left hand. Uh, as you continue to be able to manipulate the proverbial coin behind our ears with the right, right? So um, uh, I want to be able to see a great deal more as to what's happening in those areas. The lines are open if you want to be able to be a part of that. East Bay demolition progressing as well. Progressing well. Man 66 ran at bail. An attempted murder case. Girl 8 shot. 
is say one or two kinks, but smooth start for the new school year. And um, I think the one or two kinks are inevitable. Um, I don't know whether or not it's because of a lack of pay, proactive pay. Because, you know, you got to get your pay ahead of time to be able to get your material to work to do this, to do that. I don't know if it's because of a lack of pay or just that sure, that sheer um, lackadaisical approach to having your own business. That's one of the things that, for me, entrepreneurs uh, locally, they don't necessarily strive to understand that the public who supports your business, we don't work for you. If you seek to serve the public, you need to be prepared. I hate it. I, I feel like it's absolutely atrocious. The concept that a great deal of people take as it relates to making money for themselves, they're inconsistent. Your inconsistency in your space is deplorable. There's, I can't depend upon you. I can't. Whether you're a street side vendor, whether you have your own shop, whatever it is, I cannot depend on you to do business. Not real business. And this is the rule. I know you may live within the exception. Or how it will, I don't do that. Well, praise God for you. But the rule is, I feel like I'm working for you all. I feel like I have to, you, you have no product, most of you, right? You have no product on your shelves, in your space, when I ain't got that, you expect me to choose. You didn't advertise the thing. You done all these things. And you expect me to choose something else because you ain't got, but you don't want me to walk out the store with my money. This is bananas. I think that that is a mindset associated with small business in the country. You think that you work for yourself. So therefore, automatically, I on your time, you know mine. I on your time. You wake up late, you show up to the shop when you're ready, you do these things, and that is the mindset that's associated with small business and, and entrepreneurs. It's not all now. I'm saying to you, I can't put you in this bucket if it ain't applied to you. I know that there are some studious persons. I know that there are some persons that apply themselves um, um, to their work, and they're committed in every aspect. But for the most part, you show up last minute. You take the, the government check, you go off quickly to do what you want to do, take care of your own things, and then come trying to rush back. So when I come to school with my one pants, I got paint all over it because the paint wet. And you had the whole summer to rectify these things. Somebody call me and tell me whether or not we're on the same line here, if that's what's happening here, or is it the government's? Collectively, being able to take on this kind of a position where they're laid back lackadaisical and not being able to be as proactive as we expect them to be in terms of being able to move forward. Also in the papers, air traffic controllers get new industrial agreement. Uh, I read that story yesterday. It's an amazing thing. Make sure you pick up uh, your newspapers and find out exactly uh, where we are with that. Yesterday, we had a great conversation with uh, Pastor Lyle Bethel from Grace Community Church. I thought it was a great conversation. Uh, murdering a child in the womb. This is bananas. I won't talk about that. Because I know we didn't have a, a great deal. He had, a, he had sort of a setup in how he wanted to be able to present it. And, you know, with the time allotment, I allowed him to give him, I gave him that, 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 that grace to do such a thing. But the truth is, is that I have questions. And you saw that I am not necessarily concerned but sitting in the seat of neutrality, though my convictions say one thing, in this space, for the minds and the ideas that exist out there in radio land, for those persons who are talking to their radio and sending me texts and asking, well, what about this? What about that? I think sometimes, just sometimes, we have the responsibility when we make public declarations to put ourselves in these shoes. What if it, it was me? What if it was me sitting in this kind of a position, what would I do? Because I often think about that. And I thought about it going home yesterday after the show. And though I know the convictions that exist and I know the position and I'm faith-based and try to align myself with the word of God, I, I'm wrapped in this flesh, man. And being wrapped in this flesh, I said, what if it was me? 
What if it was my wife that was raped or my daughter? Would I want to now cherish, nurture, kiss, hug, provide pampers to take care of this, this monster of a child? Because you know, the baby ain't do nothing. But the truth is, is the baby come from a whole demon in my mind. My mind can't tell me nothing different. And so that is sort of the course that I wanted to kind of take with him yesterday. Uh, but he did definitely had his agenda. And I don't want to be impersonable. impersonable. Um, the way that I see Nassau and the Bahamas at large is that we're a small-knit community. 400,000 people is just a small town in, in America. Out of the 350-some million people, 400-some thousand people is just a small town where everyone knows everyone. And that's where we live, on an island, most of us. I know there's a great deal of people listening to me elsewhere, but most of us live on this island in this space where we know everyone. Most of you, you know people. If you're from any of the family islands, you know everyone. You think about that. And think about the kind of an impersonable thing. How do you detach yourself from a society? How do you now, though we are immersed, the Word of God says to us that we are to be in this world, but not of this world. And the difficulty that I see there is that you have to be fortified in your faith to understand that in a different light entirely. Because it's hard for me. Think about it, man. Your baby belly growing. Your baby girl. After she's been ravaged, what do we do? What do we do? How do we do that as parents? And I think it's hard for someone from an external standpoint to say to us, you should do this. You should do that. I don't know. I mean, I just want to be as decent as possible and talk about those things. We cannot negate, um, dismiss, reject the idea that emotion is still involved in this and heavy, rich emotion is definitely involved in this. So these are the kind of things that I want to kind of put on the table and be able to deal with those things also. Right? Right? <laughs> it's whispering in here. <laughs> they must be bringing something. You want get father? You want some, you want some bread? No, I don't want no bread. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, give me a call, man. 323-6232, 325-4316, anywhere for the family of islands, 242-300-5720, or hit me up, 422-4796. Uh, let's get into the thick of the thing today and what's going on with your position with ma marital rape. What's going on if there's a, a particular agenda afoot? Uh, do you agree with this? Do you believe in this? I'm going to take this telephone call. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hello. Hey, what's up, Sparky? Right there, Pleasant. Good afternoon, Mr. Howard Grant. What's happening with you? Oh, well, yesterday I tried so hard to call it to you and you had your pastor friend on yesterday. Mm hmm so many people told me they was they had they were trying to get into you, but you wasn't answering no calls. You you hog up the whole show with you and your pastor. I don't know why you structure it like that. When you say hog, you tell us the, you tell us the text. We text, and I read the text. You tell you didn't read no text. You, you, read you want me to read your text, Sparky? You read you read mine. I know you read mine. Okay, I know you read mine. Can I beg you? Does you beg you? We made me try to call it. Forgive me you for that. I just no, I can say it to you. Like I said, yesterday he had he had his bullet points out and he wanted to get it out because even I had some questions I wanted to put in there, but I wanted yeah, to but there, there, were, there, were, there were many people that had questions also to ask the pastor, you see? And not only your questions, survival questions and you know, that there's a lot of your listeners who wanted to get it on the conversation as well. Mm -hmm. So even people when you guess when you get in, you like hog oh, the show with you and the guest, right? But that's your show, like you say. You get it. The producer cut you this time. <laughs> Sparky, the producer cut you. I just, don't, don't fight me. This ain't how I touch a thing. But guys, call in. Like I said, I, I just want to be very clear with you and honest with you. Yesterday, I wanted him to get his, his base out. 
And that's the least we could do when we're being grace, uh, uh, gracious to our guest. And so I, I did that. Now, he did have some points that he wanted to kind of roll out. He did a, a marvelous job. And uh, I did my best to kind of put a, a view of neutrality, a view that, that didn't necessarily align with the biblical text, but more with a worldview. Not that I agree with these things, but it's my responsibility to be able to look at the contrast and have these kind of a conversation with you. So that's that. The lines are open if you want to have this conversation. I want to talk to you about a few things here. Um, there is a lot happening in Grand Bahama. Um, today you can see the Grand Bahama news in there. The Prime Minister and the Grand Bahama Port Authority urged to meet. Uh, we see a lot of persons, business leaders appeal for the end of the public exchange and some things that are happening in Grand Bahama. In response to the Prime Minister Philip Brave David's comments in Grand Bahama Port Authority, officials said that they are not prepared to continue to the back and forth with the government in the media, but will focus on the task at hand. Grand Bahama Power, Grand Bahama Port Authority is playing a key role in working with investors to bring these projects to fruition. Uh, this is information that's coming to the forefront. I'm indifferent with what I'm seeing come out of the free national movement. I am. I'm indifferent with this aggressive agenda and approach to what the government of the day is doing with the Grand Bahama Port Authority and what they should do based upon the pronouncements from the free national movement. I'm indifferent with it. I think that it's, if I'm being absolutely honest, disingenuous. I am. The relationship is a rich one with um, Grand Bahama Port Authority and the people of Grand Bahama. It is a peculiar relationship that a great deal of, it's almost like caviar. It's an acquired taste, right? It's an acquired taste. It's a peculiar relationship that exists within the confines of Grand Bahama alone. Grand Bahamian people who've lived there, culture and nature of the environment, understand very clearly where the infractions exist. And when I went over to the rejuvenation tour uh, and had an opportunity to be able to speak with... Um, Rupert Hayward and his particular capacity, you could hear, and what we hear from Sarah and what we hear from all those persons who are attached to the Grand Bahama Port Authority, you can hear that there is a desire to be able to mend this bridge and get to the objective. It doesn't make any sense. Now, the back and forth or taking this sort of a position to be able to thrust this... Uh, this idea that the government of the Bahamas is not in a good position, they shouldn't have done this. I don't, I don't, I'm indifferent with it because the free national movement had the responsibility for being able to create the framework for this. The continuation of the Hospital Creek Agreement and its strengthening over the next few years, however long it is, has been done under the framework of the free national movement. Michael Pintard is well aware of the relationship that exists with the community the government, and the Port Authority. And that relationship was not softened or fortified in any way under the last regime. Grand Bahama sat stagnant the entire time the Free National Movement was in. We have seen no movement in Grand Bahama for the longest of times. The bridge that the road, the fishing hole road that was flooded for a very long time now has a bridge. Pronouncements that was stuffed in the pipeline by a former administration, by the PLP, articulated by the FNM. The vision was cast, done by the, the former administration, and when they came in, they was able to cut ribbons for the, the school in West Grand Bahama. The school, see, this is disingenuous to me. For me, this is just politics, man. And the people of Grand Bahama suffer. This is where my family is. They're trying to figure out, when you're coming home? I say, come home for what? In an echo chamber, you could hear, come home for what? 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 It's too much. What are I coming home for? Yeah, you got your property there, you got your this there, but there's no currency. There's no movement of money in the city. Do you place all of that on the shoulders of the Grand Bahama Port Authority? 
Or does the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority play equal roles as partners to ensure that there is productivity in the city? That's just what I'm saying. It's disingenuous to come in and, and be able to, to thrust this, this sort of an idea on the shoulders of people, of, of any one administration. Because you've played your part in stagnation also. Let's be very clear about this. You've played your part in this kind of stagnation that exists in Grand Bahama right now. While you can, we keep talking about constructive criticism, while you can be able to identify the infractions that exist at this time, simultaneously, there should be a vision cast of what the Free National Movement, under the leadership of Michael Pintard, will look like, will be in Grand Bahama. You just give them just enough so they don't teeth your idea. But you reinstitute hope and an idea of reform and moving in, in your direction. If you seek to win the people over, all, other than this, all you're doing is pointing fingers. It's time for us in this country to move towards productivity, progression, growth, expansion, vision, creativity. We've continued to be able to meander in this stagnant pool, this cesspool of nothingness, and we call it the Bahamas. From an economic standpoint, from a conviction standpoint, where we stand, we've continued to be able to do the same thing. And we expect there to be a different result. Branville, stop it. Don't whisper in my ears. Obviously, <laughs> this is two sides of the same coin. This is the exact same thing. Well, Peter cannot call Paul any different. Peter and Paul is the same thing. And the pot can't call the kettle black. All is the same thing. Let's have a clear conversation about this today, guys. Let me take this first commercial break and be right back after this. Foundation. Grab your camera, capture the spirit of the Bahamas, and win cash and prizes. Scotiabank, in partnership with the Guardian Media Group, invites all youth, amateur, and professional photographers to enter the Celebrate Bahamas 50 photography competition being held under the theme, One Nation, One Legacy, Our Future. With more than $8,000 in cash to be won, snap those photos and send them in by August 30th. Visit guardiantalkradio.com or bs.scotiabank.com to find out how to enter. Let's celebrate our proud nation in photos. Terms and conditions apply. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, and Bellevue Gifts. Want to reach your Grand Bahama customers? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the NASA Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. At Alive, we believe that every common loftier goal is within our reach. We believe in the essence of our identity, the richness of our history, and the boundless potential that lies within us. That's why our network is built by, owned by, and managed by us. Alive. Believe in Bahamians. Visit BeAlive.com to take advantage of our golden independence deals. Alive. Believe in best. You've tried everything. Asus with your mother's cousin, sister's auntie, and even hiding your money under your mattress. But is your money safe? Your Bahamian dollar deposit in a member bank or credit union is insured up to $50,000. If anything happens, your deposit up to the insured value will be returned to you thanks to Deposit Insurance. Visit Deposit Insurance Corporation at www.dic.bf. Protection for your money, guaranteed with DIC. Corporation wishes to advise the public, its customers, and the residents of Sands Road off East Street North, inclusive of side corners, that there may be an interruption to their water supply between the hours of 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. on August 29th, 2023, for a total of four hours to perform a main tie-in on Sands Road. During this period, there may be road closures and detours around the work areas. Motorists are asked to avoid this area between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. 
The corporation apologizes for any inconvenience this may cause and appreciates your support as they work to improve their level of service. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, on this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous Tuesday afternoon, August 29th. We are sliding out of this month, guys, and I hope you're prepared for the ninth month because some things should be birthed. Talk to me. You know, I just get preachy quickly and then come back on the thing, right? Talk to me, right? It's a beautiful day, guys. Be a part of the conversation. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family of islands. 242-300-5720. Or uh, hit me up on the text. 422-4796. Let's read this. He says, good afternoon. The legislation for cannabis bill is in and will fuel the black market if recreational marijuana cultivation and use is not addressed. Um, I'm going to have a conversation about this. Can you give me next week? Uh, God spare, we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Because I've already called, uh, my cousin and I had an in-depth conversation about what it could be. And um, I was hoping to go to Atlanta because I'd already made some calls uh, about this to be able to speak with some persons who own um, CBD and THC uh, cannabis uh, distributors in in Atlanta. So I wanted to be able to get a clearer understanding of this because the truth is, is that we are on the service end of the thing again. And it's confusing to me. We started this off with a conversation about medicinal cannabis. And we were supposed to be able to give formality to that medicinal use. The world has shifted since then. I think it was in. Since we started this thing. And things have shifted day in and day out. As it relates to this industry. If you ask me, whilst there is still viability and a desire to be able to dive into cannabis and the prospects that exist there, we have lost a significant market share. And um, it's almost like if you don't get in early with Facebook, all you're doing is just a participant later on. If you're looking for capital gain, if you're looking for riches, if you're looking for expansion, that's just my view with this. I think that the government of the Bahamas has um, not necessarily been disingenuous, but not proactive as they should be, not understanding. And I think that that is the, the course for a great deal of, this, uh, of the areas in our, in our country that needs to be able to move forward. There's no proactivity. There's no concept of what do we do next? How do we strategically place ourselves in the position that we can, cap- we can capture what's going to happen next? How do we identify the people that can give us the forecast of where we should st- strategically be as a country, as a people, as a nation, that we could be in position for growth next? We don't have any of that. We have a great deal of men whom I respect a great deal, and this is not me saying let's do away with them, but we have a great deal of men that sit in this position of a traditional, this traditional mindset, that don't understand technology, that don't understand this, the, this forward movement, that only understand spaces and places that they've existed before. And so they try to navigate those waters and stagnate progression. There's no fusion in our community. There's no happy medium here. It's only your way, which is their way, a traditional way, or no way. And traditionally, we've identified, even if there is a desire to move and utilize and fortify with technology, you wait five, ten years after these things are dead. After people stop using these things. Now we're back at square one again. That's what happened here. Let me see if I can take a telephone call. Call on the line. Go ahead. 
Hey, what's happening, Albert? All is well, man. What's happening with you? Everything good, man. Let me, let me, let me just give you a little insight about this marijuana thing. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, they imported 15 shipments of marijuana from Canada to Jamaica mm -hmm. and exported two. That's all, right? They imported 15 shipments of cannabis from Canada to yeah. Jamaica and exported only, two. Only exported two. Two shipments. How does that sound to you? It sound about right for the Caribbean. <laughs> but listen, it's I want to touch base on I want to touch base on this this situation with the Port of Detroit and, and the Obama's government. Go ahead. Fred Mitchell made a statement the other day about the Port Authority came to the government begging them to extend the uh tax tax uh mm -hmm. the the, the part of the North Creek Agreement that deals with the uh yeah. real property tax. Yeah. What Fred Mitchell failed to, uh, failed to, to inform the Bayman people that it was a Perry Christie led administration where he was the Minister of Foreign Affairs in that cabinet that approved that extension. Mm -hmm. There was a committee led by the former Minister of Health, Marcus Bettel. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, a PLD committee that made the decision to extend that Hawks Creek, Agre Hawks Creek Agreement. Mm -hmm. So, what Fred Mitchell and, and Brave is doing now with the Port Authority, that's only smoke and mirrors. That's only the distraction to distract the name of people, of um, the, the people in, in Grand Bahama in particular. You ask, you, you ever ask yourself why? Why you think they're trying to distract us? Because they they're the doing that. The best, the best way to divert attention from yourself is to put on somebody else. And I think that's what's happening. Wow. So, so if, if, if Grand Bahama was that important to you, Fred Mitchell was the Minister of Foreign Affairs at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, cabinet make they make collective decisions, right? Yeah. So he must have he was a part of decision making when they extend that part of the Oxford Creek Agreement. Uh what, six or um eight million dollars a year or something like that? However much it is. But well, it was helpful. But this was before the pandemic. This is before the pandemic, this is before the deterioration that we're seeing come out of Grand Bahama right now. No, but Grand Bahama being deteriorating from after Jane and Francis. Two thousand and four. I agree with from you. From Dean and Francis. Yes. I would even go, go so far back to say if I'm Hurricane Floyd. You're doing a lot, but okay, go ahead. You know what I mean? So Grandmama was on a down... As a matter of fact, I would say Grandmama was on a down slide from Edward St. George Tyree. You, you see this? You see this? You keep getting back further. <laughs> right? You keep getting back <laughs> further. You know what I mean? Further. But, you know, it, 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 there's so much issues in Grandmama that, that, you know, it's not fair for the government to blame the Port Authority solely. I, but I, I feel like that's I feel like that's what's happening here because no one has addressed what's happening between 2007 and 2012 when we expected there to be a significant rebound for Grand Bahama. No one, no but one addressing that. If, if you if you were to take a look at uh, take a look at Grand Bahama, the industrial sector in Grand Bahama is booming. The, as a matter of fact, the yeah, industrial yeah. sector is what carries Grand Bahama. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it is. And who is responsible for the industrial sector? Not the government. Mm -hmm. It is. So take away the industrial sector. Grandmama, you might as well cut the lights off. Wow. I appreciate your call, my brother. Thank you so much right, for, your, for your contribution. Let me see if I can get the next caller. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Yes, I'm sorry. Hey, Howard, how you doing? I'm, I'm good, man. What's up? Hey, what's up, Ciali? Yeah, how you doing? Um, yeah, let me just give you the jump off of Grand Bahama. Uh, Dorian, I mean, the twin hurricanes exasperated the condition that already had started. Mm -hmm. Go back to 9-11, the first beginning of the implosion of the hospitality industry and the change locally and globally that we failed to adapt to. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely correct when you say the leadership of uh, the current leadership and previous leadership lacked the mindset on the shift that happened, and guess what, that same year. In 2001, we entered into January 1st of 2001, we entered into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Ideas, concepts, procedures, processes, all change. Uh, Facebook did not exist. Mm -hmm. Google, as we know it, did not exist. Mm -hmm. Google Earth, as we know it, did not exist. Mm -hmm. All of the things that we take for granted now did not exist. The question then is how we adjusted and adapted. Now, Grand Bahama Port Authority has failed also in, in respect to also adapting. You can look at the leadership. The Grand Bahama Port Authority is an urgent need of leadership. The current leadership, as far as I remember, has been in place for 14 years, continuous years. That's longer than any administration we've had in this country. Mm -hmm. Now, you made a statement concerning 
uh, Michael Pintard, mm-hmm. and the which you consider disingenuous his position. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you made those same statements I just referred to as to leadership. You know how political parties is run in the country. Mm-hmm. If the leader has no understanding and is afraid to delegate the authority to an area that he may not understand, you then have stagnation mm-hmm. of what is necessary, what is needed to execute. Mm-hmm. So either the minister for the Grand Bahama or the leader of the country holds responsibility for what did not happen in Grand Bahama. The other caller is absolutely correct in the point he made concerning the collaborative team of people who came to make the decision not to extend the Hoxie Creek Agreement, because the Hoxie Creek Agreement has not been extended, mm-hmm. but to delay, to delay the implementation of the taxation regime that should have came into place since mm-hmm. this was the second period of delay. It was delayed for 25 years retroactively since 1990 by the uh, Hubert Ingram administration. Mm-hmm. Grand Bahama is the place right now for almost everything the government talks about, the green economy, the blue economy, the ocean economy, the orange economy, uh, the carbon economy, the aquamarine economy, the digital economy, all these things that you've seen them made feeble attempts over the last 15 years. And no one was able to even dig the trench. You know how you build a building, you dig the trench before you part a foundation? Mm-hmm. They never even made it to digging the trench because they had no concept. There was no blueprint. But, do they, and then, but see, Alan, they still don't have a concept. No, that's my point. They, they, don't. they still don't have a concept. Okay, so so we talk about these things, and this administration more specifically is heavy on what needs to happen from a carbon credit standpoint, what needs to happen with global warming and aligning ourselves with these particular things, right? Talking about our carbon footprint, talking about the orange economy, the green economy, so forth and so on. And like you stated, the infrastructure exists in Grand Bahama right now. All of this infrastructure. There is accessibility for significant expansion, but there is no investment in Grand Bahama. No, it's not investment, but see, you must also first have a vision. See, remember this now. You start with a vision, followed by a plan, and then you have uh, strategies of execution. No one can tell you their vision for Grand Bahama. They can tell you, I did. Mm-hmm. I hear, I think, I was told, I believe. No one says what they know. Mm-hmm. So they have treated Grand Bahama like a religion, believe without, you know, faith without seeing. Mm-hmm. So the problem is that we are not a religion, we are an actual economy. And so when you go back to Mr. Pintat, I've taken the opportunity, in fact, during the last two years, he's the only one that has made himself available and what these models are and the steps that is necessary for them to take and the 30 or more legislation that has to be modified or created to actually have it done. I'm not talking about like the others have done. Just tell me now so I can go make a press conference. I'm talking about a leader that is demanded to understand what it is to f- not to be able to do it himself personally. So, so he's giving you an air. Yeah, no. But it has not translated it. into his pronouncement socially. No, right, because it makes sense because... Again, he can't absorb into 40 years. He's trying to understand so he can put the right amount of people, the right people around him for execution. But let me, let me, no, but let me say why, without his thing, he can defend why he's doing it. Let me tell you why it makes sense. The government has moved into an area where we may have to surrender. If the government does what it says it's doing by the way it's doing, we may have to surrender the country to the owners of the Grand Bahama Port Authority to compensate them for what the government is seeking to do. And, 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 I, and I, I invite the debate. See, heavy. I what understand. You saying? Huh? That's extremely heavy what you're saying. Yes, because we're talking about legal... There, there's, there's, there's multiple countries who have done similar things that have suffered a fate. There's one, there's one who daddy, his, the guy who built the, the guy who built Bahama started to ask his daddy how he got countries to bend and the international people had to come in and buy him out because countries try to do exactly to him a country in Africa try to do to him what we're saying we're going to do to the country right now that move him into billionaire status 
What I'm simply saying is this. Their step has what is called a five-year plan, okay? okay? The problem is the Hawksville Creek Agreement is a law. It is a contract. What we have done over the years, we gave them title to 251 square miles. That is private property protected by the Constitution. Understand that the GBPA by itself is of no value. It probably has a value of a dollar. The assets is no longer in the GPPA, and by virtue of what we have allowed over the years. See, they're talking to people that don't know. But what we have allowed them to extract, to extract those, those assets, and by virtue of no action, it is theirs. What are you going to take over the GPPA? The, 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 the regulatory authority? Because as it stands right now, we, we, you, know, you hear of Mr. Fred Mitchell. Oh, it's going to cost a million dollars a mile. There's over 100 miles of road in Grand Bahama or more. So the, uh, so the question then becomes, okay, the only value in the Port Authority right now is the water company that is definitely $10 million or $20 million in the red to do what is necessary to happen. Okay, we can have that conversation. And the, the fees that come from it. But when you sever the fees, which is wrong in the, in, as if through the application, because essentially the Progressive Liberal Party is having a conversation, combining issues, the GPPA and the Grand Bahama Development Company, who has responsibility for collecting those fees and maintaining certain portions of the roads and other different things. This is not a simple issue that the government is doing. This is, this is pageantry for the well, government. And well, so if the, huh? we got to get into further in that. i got to take this commercial right. break. But just let me say this. Mm-hmm. I think the, the methodology that Mr. Pinta is saying is that there has to be an honest, open conversation as to where we are and where we need to go in light of the laws and the liabilities it has to have. It's the same similar for a number of years, but I'm simply saying that's, also... That's not how we frame that, though. I gotta let you go. I gotta let you go. Uh, you gotta call back at, after one for, for me, uh, C. Allen. That's not how he framed that. He framed it in the traditional sense of how politicians continue to be able to use conjecture and to identify exterior issues not with the transparency that this time requires saying can we come to the table have a come to jesus moment to find transparency and growth that is what wins you votes that is what wins you hearts not this traditional garbage politics we're done with that let me take this quick commercial break and be right back after this the fact the fact Foundation. Farmers Foundation. everywhere, fishermen here and there, the Ministry of Agriculture, Marine Resources, and Family Island Affairs now has 30 services available online. Apply for your agriculture farm land lease, farmer's registration and license, and crawfish trapping permits online. All kinds of duty-free and import permits are now just a click away. Visit mygateway.gov.bs and grow your business today. My Gateway, making government work for you. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. At Ron's Electric Motors, they repair and rewind all major brands of electric motors, including water pumps, generators back end, welding machines, electric lifts, air compressors, battery chargers, and more. They equip to handle up to 850 kilowatts and rewind up to 450 horsepower motors. They're conveniently located on the corner of Wolf and Clarence Roads and are open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays till noon. They offer 24 hours emergency assistance. You can reach them at 24235. Five six zero two four nine. Okay, school bag, books, pencils, uniform. Oh Lord! And I gotta buy snacks too. Just lay it on the, line. the Guardian Media Group and AML Foods want to help families in need with our first ever Back to School Snackathon. What's a snackathon? Well. We want to help by assisting in donating school snacks to children that may need them as they head back to school this year. To be a part of our Snackathon, all you have to do is shop at your favorite Solomon Superstore 
or Fresh Market. At the store, you can donate your pre-existing loyalty points or you can donate cash directly at the register. Every single penny will go towards purchasing snacks that will be donated for distribution by the Bahamas Feeding Network and Hands for Hunger. Together, we can ensure that every child that opens their backpack this year will have a snack and a smile. Get involved, get involved. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio. Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Lines were wide, wide, wide open. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family of islands, toll-free call, 242-300-5720. Hit me up, 422-4796. The texts are coming in. It says, Howard, have you seen the price of the food store on the high price frequency incline? I hear no one saying nothing about this. A few months ago, I believe the minister said something like, everything is good now. I don't understand us as a people. We all must be rich. I, I think the Bahamian people are defeated. Oh, man. That's hard to say. Isn't it hard to say? It's hard to say. Let me quantify what I'm saying. Um, buy in for the reform that you're looking for. There isn't enough buy in. There is social contentment, not necessarily satisfaction, but contentment. Remember we talked about this one time? Remember we talked about that people aren't really looking for success. They're just looking for comfort and contentment. I think that as one issue spills into another and there is this compilation, this, this, this piling up of issues, most of us in our Bahamian society try to get in where we fit in and just relax. Then they make these declarations out into the universe and say, child, it is what it is, baby. Our language is that of a broken man. You ever hear people and say, hey, what's this child in radio just trying to do? That is brokenness. And believe it or not, this constant regurgitation of this exact same nothingness, this stagnation is where you see yourself. Many people like to believe that there is science out here, but this declaration shifts your position. You have to believe. Uh, C. Allen started to say something. I wrote it down. He said that there was an application of faith without seeing, right? But there's also this concept. So you ain't got no seeing and you ain't got no works. I, I don't believe that that's faith. I don't. I just believe that that's sheer laziness. You ain't see nothing, that means you ain't got no vision, and you ain't doing nothing, that means you ain't got no application. So to your text, I believe that the Bahamian people are broken. And you know something? I think I'm right. Let me tell you why. Because I told you before, what I was taught at the hotel, oh Lord, I was talking the hotel again. This is, don't fight me, this is what I learned. What I was taught at the hotel is that you need three elements when you're hiring someone, someone in the hotel. You need them to be teachable, you need them to be trainable, you need them to be coachable. All of these elements speak to brokenness. You need someone who don't come ready-made. I got to put you together to use you for my purpose. I got to put you together to use you for my purpose. Even the word of God says that I can't use you unless you're broken. And so this is the principle that applies. We as a broken people can be molded and shaped, whether it's for a political agenda, whether it's for a social agenda to be able to move in one direction, whether it's for private sector to be able to come in and say, hey, I can give you jobs. All you got to do is shuffle and dance. I'll give you the jobs. We're going to make $9.7 billion here and provide 
48 jobs. This is bananas. This is where brokenness gets you. And the only way we could fortify ourselves is coming to, there has to be a clarity within ourselves that we need to be able to step up and do what we have to do. Everyone's scattered in the community. And that's what this, this facade of independence and liberation does to us. You're scattered. You believe that your house and your castle is on your 50 by 50 house, huh? but you get the big wall around and no one can get, that's where your sanctity is. You have nothing to do with the community anymore. Once you can pay your bills, you're good. That's where the community is. There is no community. Politicians know this. The private sector knows this. Foreign direct interest knows this. And once you are satisfied with a job, you could never get to the community that you want. Let me take a telephone call. Caller, you on the line with us live? Go ahead. That's a caller? Go ahead, caller. No, that ain't no caller. 323-6232-325-4316, 325-4259, anywhere from the family violence, 242-300-5720. You know the numbers. Be a part of that. Um, um, we can be able to do that. So let me read another one. It says, uh, the government needs to, the Grand Bahama Port Authority needs the power of eminent domain in Freeport area. The government needs to stay out of Freeport affairs because the government ain't making no sense. We need to get the Freeport airport off the ground, sell bonds and raise the cash if we don't want to let the private sector pay for the new airport. Michael P., Michael Pintard, has short, ma no, you know, I'm open, right? So it says, uh, Howard, correct, these people, Ingram extended the Freeport thing too, right? This is a uh, Texas coming through, right? The, this is a relentless conversation about the exact same thing, and none of us going nowhere. All we're doing is talking the same thing. I, I, I do this with the intent of not being able to only spark your minds, but for you to call in and lend suggestion without this political hedge of protection around you. Don't walk in there with your ficus of political malarkey around you. Talk to me. Don't walk in the conversation like that. Man, drop that ficus. Let that go. Let the hedge go. The politics that you believe insulates you from society, let it go. And have a clear conversation about national growth and development. Be clear about this. You cannot cling to your political organization's objective of being able to get back in power and reject the idea that this country is deprived of true leadership. And that's why I say what I said. If we are looking for true leadership in the next dispensation of leadership, next dispensation of, 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 of election cycles in this country, it cannot be with the same old politics. I'm tired of that. I can't sit down there and anticipate what you can say. You've got to come from your heart. And you got to have a heart for the people. Call on the line with his live. Go ahead. No? The lines are lit up, guys. I don't know if there's a problem again. The lines are lit up. I'm going to the calls and then I hear a buzzing sound. Okay? So you can try to be able to give me that again. I just want to be clear with you guys, man. I, I know that you are indifferent. I want to read a couple of these texts that I got here and uh, talk to you about the growth and development of Grand Bahama and the inconsistency that's coming from the government of the day that exists out there because there's transparency. In 2004, the Grand Bahama, power, Grand Bahama estimated to have given the Treasury $150 million prior to that. It is estimated in 2009 to be two hundred ninety thousand one hundred ninety I'm sorry, $190 million. That is a $40 million increase. You understand? Let's talk about this. The governor said to give 9% more this year. We don't keep this place running. Grand Bahama Port Authority does. All funds go to the government. This is a text that's coming through. I just want to be able to read this with clarity. They run schools. They run government offices. They run VAT. They run immigration fees, customs duties, road taxes, stamp duties, um, record changes, all these things, corporate taxes, fuel, national insurance, all these things happen now. I just feel like there is a disingenuous approach to these things. I had to sit down with Rupert Hayward. I had to. And I hate to keep banging on this. We need more money in the coffers of the Bahamas, in, in, the, in the government coffers, in the treasury. Rupert Hayward's desire 
surpasses, come on, let me be decent, because I sat with the man. His desire surpasses the confines of tradition and the relationship that exists between the government of the Bahamas and the Port Authority. Now, the government of the Bahamas and the Port Authority had a relationship that was productive for the time and the era that existed. Can I say that? Can we be honest with that? During the Jack Hayward era and the Edwardson George era with Hubert Ingram and even with Perry Christie at some point, there was productivity for those traditional men who had an understanding for the business of the time. The times that we're in now require, like you said, C. Allen, it requires a very clear understanding of the infrastructure that exists here. You see, one time ago, Hotmail was only an email. But now, your email address, which is access to you, your thinking, the rhythm and the frequency of how you do things is considered data. That's gold. Companies are paying big money to be able to get access to you. Things are changing in the, in the environment, global environments. And we're still considering emails, just regular emails. Leadership has not taken a deep dive into what's happening in the world, where the money really is, the leadership locally. They're still doing the same old, same old. How are we going to change that? We got to change that. And we cannot change in preparation for a brighter future by using the same old, same old. Mindset. I'm excited to see the shuffle of the grand bar, the shuffle of the cabinet. But how excited can I truly be? Talk to me. If I take, if I wear in my seam shoes and all I do is take the left foot and put it on the right, the right foot put on the left, change the laces over and plop the tongue out, these are the same pair of shoes. There's no new innovation that's coming in there. There's no new incorporation that's coming in there. There needs to be a fusion of not just mere minds that have been te taught by the juggernauts of these political organizations. There needs to be a genuine mind steep, steep with a very clear understanding of what needs to happen globally and how do we apply that locally. That's vision. Telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon, Howard Grant. Hey, what's up, my brother? Yeah, it was a great show yesterday, Howard. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm a dummy, right? <laughs> okay. And so I'm glad that uh, you reminded me that choice, right, comes secondary to pro-life. Mm -hmm. You understand me, Howard? Mm -hmm. And most people don't realize that. Your choice is... I mean, you know, life comes first then. And so I guess that was to simplify, but after listening to the rebroadcast, I, I got to appreciate it even more, Howard. I appreciate you, my brother. Great show, you know. And so, Howard, you are very in-depth. You're just humorous with it, right? Yes, I try to be. Come on, but I, I want you to know, but I, I like how you think, Howard. Thank you, my brother. But uh, I don't want to say too much today, but, you know, it's something that bothered me, and it was for a long time, and I've been discussing it, managing it here and there. I speak with Seattle now and then, but, you know, I, I really would like for him to be um, relentless in exposing the, the digital imbecility mm -hmm. of our now, judging from what C. Allen is saying, right? Yeah, judging from what C. Allen is saying, right? Because I, I was always mentioning, but I read a lot here and there, so I was concerned about, we, all right, we have known that that is the new oil for a little while now, about a decade, right, Howard? Mm -hmm. So we would have listened and, took it and taken models or, from Europe and other countries, first world countries as far as digital sovereignty, integrity, rights, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are way behind on that. And then there's a gentleman who wrote an article. I don't know if he had something to do with the sports community, but I read it. You know, I read so it. Was like, uh, it was something to do with the government not facilitating or putting in the digital uh, legislative infrastructure to facilitate YouTube or some Internet entity paying them mm -hmm. or monetizing whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. And so I mightn't be into that, part, that model what he's into, but I, I feel it for them. And I look at all of this is just talk, talk, like Sea Island says. So I, whenever Sea Island calls, I like to listen. And I think he needs to promote, he needs to expose these jokers more, man, because we're not going to get anywhere. And as I listen to you, Howard, you're very, like, uplifting, you know, especially when you and Daz to be on the radio, like, to the people. You know, I mean, it's just, like, it's, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like you're paying the true reality. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and I mean, I guess I, I listen to you, right, Mr. Grant. The problem for me is really the behaving people, you know, and the the buffoon, the political buffoonery. Mm-hmm. Like they're stupefied. Like you know, there's a guy who I don't know who he is, but he seems to be a psyops officer for the PLP government, and then we have psyops officers for the FNM government. <laughs> I saw a guy he's, this is on uh, whatever Facebook or whatever about brave uh, the PM line here and there. And look what he's doing here and there. But I, when, he, when he say look what he's doing, I don't see anything. I just see Bush and Rhodes. Mm-hmm. And so um, this is like a joke for me. You know, and so this is like, this, this guy, he, he, he's there before the prime minister's arri- prime minister arrives. So this is, you, I mean, you know where the PSYOPs office is, right, Howard? <laughs> Dude, you need to stop it. Go ahead. Come, come on, ahead. man. Listen to me, man. Just Howard. Just this. But I would use, use make me laugh, too. So ain't nothing wrong with make you laugh. But I'm just saying, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> political goonery. And buffoonery is the death of this nation. Yeah. And when you look at it, at 59 years old, I could look and say back, panoramically, that politics has destroyed this country, Howard Grant. Mm-hmm. You saw the migrants landing on South Beach just now, right? Mm-hmm. You see them running, right? Wow. Yeah, man, it's a live footage of the migrants running loose a foot. So what happened for decades? We knew that they were coming in from the South. So if the citizens don't get together and start their own, I mean, like, what, 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 what's going on with the country? We, we, but that's what I say. Once we could get, and I appreciate your call, my brother. You always... Uh, yeah, we're pathetic. Yeah. A pathetic bunch. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, especially in the house uh, 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 on Bay Street. Pathetic <laughs> bunch. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. I, I uh, it, For me, I just have to be very simple. I, I don't need complexity in it. I don't need, like uh, Hubert Ingram would indicate, I don't need flowers in my words. I just need simplicity. And if I put it in the simplest of terms, there is no community. There is no hope. There's no community. Here in the Bahamas, there's none. There is a desire after 1973 running into independence, and we have not done. This is a, this is a proverbial marathon where every man for himself and God for us all. It's a proverbial marathon. Every single man running after this thing to acquire until he or she dies. And then they take up the, the baton and continue to be able to lead on. The only baton, baton that's passed on in our society, this is Howard Grant, is the baton of capitalism, the facade of independence. Child, God bless the child who got his own. Mama get, Papa get, but God bless the child. That is the garbage. Talk to me. I can't even get no amen. That's the garbage that you're putting in the young people's minds. So when you hear a young girl say, Charlie, exchange ain't no robbery, you don't understand why there is a significant exponential expansion with prostitution. Oh, you all don't want to talk like this. You didn't condition the children in mind to say, go get what you get and use what you got. And then the next generation prostitute themselves. May not necessarily be their physical body, But their desire to be able to give up their convictions, their hopes, their aspirations just to acquire this thing that's fleeting. That's bananas to me. And that's what you're teaching them. And then you seal it. Huh? Where the ever so ancient words came down from the mount. It is what it is. That's how you seal the thing. It is what it is. Bop. Next telephone call. Call on the line with his live. Go ahead. Go ahead, call you on with his life. Howard right, Grant. Hey, what's up, Jeff? It's all good, man, all good. It's always a pleasure to follow up 52. Yeah. Sometimes I, he gets in before me, sometimes I come in after him. Mm-hmm. I want the people to listen very carefully to what he has, to what he has said today. And what you have said is so, is so profound that many people still won't understand. You know, the only thing that's bene- that is beneficial as far as the people are concerned this government is is the taxation and the heavy pressure that we have to bear to, to deal with all these matters that, that is negatively impacting us. The sad part about the whole thing, Howard, and it, it, you have to really open your eyes to truly understand what's really going on. You say capitalism. A lot of these persons who are in leadership positions, especially in politics, are already well off. They don't feel the pressures that we feel out here on the ground. And, mm-hmm. and quite mm-hmm. They really don't care. After 50 years in this country, and we keep on referring to it, you know, uh, you don't believe that even though we are a young country, you don't believe that we should be a, a lot better off than where we are now? Mm-hmm. If we have leaders that really cared about country and its people, not, not just their immediate family where they make everything and then they kick the, the door and 
Islam is shot in our face. Mm-hmm. Um, but persons who really care about the prosperity of this country, where all of us can, 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 can really prosper comfortably in this country. When you have leadership that doesn't, that seem not to care about that level of expectation for the people, mm-hmm. then it's a, then it's a fail, then it's fail leadership. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm just going to close on that note, Howard, because it gets very disheartening when those who can see, see what's going on and try to speak to it, to try open the mindset and educate our people who, who can't see slightly, but we want them to see more when they refuse to see more, even though they have the wherewithal and the understanding to see, wow. but they chose to remain in the, in the wilderness, then, you know, it's a sad case for the Bahamian people. And, and you know, my heart just weeps. But thanks but for it, taking my call out. I appreciate you, my brother, but it's hard to talk with your mouth full. Grammy says, you shouldn't talk with your mouth full. Talk to me. If you could see <laughs> what you're chewing, how you could talk. And that proverbial chewing is acquiring things. That's what you all put on this Bahama land. After 1973, no one has cast the vision for what the Bahama land is, where we should go and what we should take. We sing the national anthem. We say the pledge. We commit ourselves to the flag. We talk about the strength, the sky, the sun, and our flags. But no one talks about the spirit of a man and what for the growth and development of this country. So we see all we could see. There is nothing that I'm saying on this radio that you can't see. Nothing. There is nothing that I say out here that you don't live and travail on a day. If I start talking to you about uh, the roads, you ride the road every day. If I start talking to you about the schools, you go to school every day. The, the hospital, the this, that you are here. I am here. So we have the same thing in common. We're in the same space, in the same environment. But many of us who have the voice who have a political position, a social position, are identified historically as people of value, we can't speak to it. Many people can't speak to it. You know why? Because they can see, but they're busy chewing. They've acquired things. Like what do you say? Tings, 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 and your mouth stuff. So out of social decency, you shut up and tell your mouth empty. Next telephone call. Caller on the line with this live. Go ahead. That's the caller. Did they still on call you on with this live? No? Okay. Let me read a text. It says, good afternoon. It's a good day, Mr. Grant. Awesome show always. I've been listening since you took over from one. Can you find out about Clico, please? Also, Sparky can do nothing with himself. He is so negative. He thinks that it's all about him. The same thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, this is what people say. I don't, I ain't going to read into this. I ain't going to read no more of this, but this is what they say about you. I ain't going to fight you. Right? So let me read the next one. This is who knows who those people are and what their mental and physical problems are. Not everyone is that incorrect, friendly Haitian guy who wants to weed your yard. Oh, I, Howard. There is a new video circulating of individuals fleeing a boat that landed in our country. How do we know who these people are? This is a national security crisis. Who knows who they are and the mental and physical problems they have? Not everyone is that indecent. I'm sorry, innocent. Not everyone is that innocent, friendly Haitian guy who wants to weed your yard. It's a text that's coming through. It says, uh, get critical thinker back. He has been consistent over the last three administrations with your political positionings. Okay. So it says, Howard, I agree. Today's world's world have superseded. Okay. Super, superseded our traditional leadership. We need to get rid of the POP and the FNM and introduce new young leadership who can relate to global trends. Now, I don't want you to think I'm advocating for youth and not intelligence. <laughs> ah! We're going to be in the same space. You think I just want young people? We might as well put babies in the thing. Ah? You think I just want you to have a fresh young face so you look good when you get into the party? Oh, my God, you're so handsome. I love what you do. You hear your skin glowing, my God. That's maternal. You think I want that? We still need a happy, 
blend, a happy medium, a fusion of traditional mindsets and a very clear understanding of how things worked traditionally from yesteryear and a youthful look and outstanding understanding of a path to take for tomorrow. That's how you work. They can row in the room a little while, but after they understand each other, they put something on the table, they chop it down, shave it enough, and put it to the Bahamian people, and we can recognize strength in that. Young man, I call you because you are. Again, young man, I call you because you are strong. Old man, I call you because you are wise. We need both strength and wisdom to move this country forward. And not this proverbial facade of a strength. Not these strengths that you choose. The fellow who look good like you, who been a part of your political organization. Child, your mom used to be a PLP. Your daddy was a PLP for years. Your mother was F and M. We don't need them people. We don't need them. Uh, uh, uh. All they are are mannequins stuffed with the language of their political organization. We need real people who are out here making real decisions. The lines are open, guys. Please be a part of the conversation. Let me take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. Y'all heard of our ghost pepper wings? Well, they're back for a limited time. At any Popeye's, enjoy our famous ghost pepper wings, marinated in spicy Louisiana seasonings, including a touch of ghost pepper. Each wing is battered and breaded in southern-style crispy coating and then fried up. Try six today along with the buttermilk biscuit and a signature side. Stop in before they're gone. Are they almost gone, buddy? Don't get left out this time. No, that chicken from Popeye's. Shavara Roka Inias, Chikchani Farms. I don't think I chose farming. I think farming chose me. Winning this award will definitely give us the funding that we need to start our farming season. Most persons who are in the agriculture field realize that at the start of the season, which is in the next couple of weeks, you do always need a bulk of cash. I think we in agriculture over the last 10 years. And so when I saw the opportunity for an award like this, I figured, you know what? I should just go ahead and enter. The Agrarian Awards, September 16th. <laughs> Too many debt bills? Overdue on loan payments? Improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Shrink your debt payments with a debt consolidation loan and built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Call 356-7764. Jump back in gear and save with BWF end of summer explosion store-wide and tent sale up to 30 percent off monday august the 28th through saturday september the 2nd save big on appliance combo specials ductless ac units barbecue grills household supplies kitchen and outdoor cooking supplies junk canoe and craft supplies rechargeable and battery operated fans and so much more calling all teachers who are still preparing those classrooms This sale is for you. Come and check us out for your bulletin board materials. BWF, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturdays from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. BWF, we're more than just our name. Located number 13, Wilton Street. Call 394-0004-6. Check us out on Facebook. We also ship to the Family Islands. It's Whopper Wednesday every Wednesday at Burger King Nassau. Make your Wednesday sizzle and sink your teeth into a flame-grilled beef patty topped with tomatoes, fresh-cut lettuce, mayo, pickles, ketchup, and sliced onions all on a toasted sesame seed bun with fries for only $5.95. Including that, this Whopper Wednesday, grab a friend and head down to your favorite BK Nassau location for a flame-grilled Whopper made your way with crisp fries for only $5.95. Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. Believe in education. Elevate your learning journey with the technology you need to succeed. Discover exclusive deals on our postpaid plans, featuring devices, tablets, accessories, and more. With Alive as your partner, experience seamless connectivity, creation, and collaboration anywhere, anytime. Visit your nearest Alive store today and champion a brighter, smarter future. Alive. 
believe in Bahamians, believe in best. Let me ask you a few questions. What's your name? Pam. Favorite food? Steak. Beer or wine? Wine. That's, I guess so. Are you serious? Yeah, why? Unless your money is in a bank or credit union that's a member of the Deposit Insurance Corporation, there's no guarantee it's safe. Yeah, but what if something happens to the bank? Your Bahamian dollar deposits are insured up to $50,000, so you'd still be ahead. Plus, your mattress might catch fire. Then what? Man, those banks and credit unions are looking good right about now. Visit the DIC's website at www.dic.bs. Protection for your money, guaranteed with DIC. At Ron's Electric Motors, they repair and rewind all major brands of electric motors, including water pumps, generators, and the generator's back end, welding machines, electric lifts, air compressors, battery chargers, and more. They're equipped to handle up to 850 kilowatts and rewind up to 450 horsepower motors. They're conveniently located on the corner of Wolf and Clarence Roads and are open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays till noon. They offer 24 hours emergency assistance. You can reach them at 242-356-0249. Okay, school bag, books, pencils, uniform, oh Lord. And I gotta buy snacks too? Just lay it on the, line. the Guardian Media Group and AML Foods want to help families in need with our first ever Back to School Snackathon. What's a snackathon? Well, we want to help by assisting in donating school snacks to children that may need them as they head back to school this year. All you have to do is shop at your favorite Solomon Superstore or Fresh Market. At the store, you can donate your pre-existing loyalty points or you can donate cash directly at the register. Every single penny will go towards purchasing snacks that will be donated for distribution by the Bahamas Feeding Network and Hands for Hunger. Together, we can ensure that every child that opens their backpack this year will have a snack and a smile. Get involved, get involved. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon, August 29th. If you're celebrating a birthday, happy birthday to you. Uh, we hope that you continue to be able to do well in this life and uh, move from glory to glory. I, I just want to be positive with y'all, you know. I only want, listen to me. I want to say, God, y'all don't believe, I believe in y'all so hard. I believe in the Bahamas so bad. God knows it, and he wouldn't let me run away. Just like when I was young, my mother wouldn't let me go to Bush Gardens. I was mad with her. How dare you let all my cousins go to Bush Garden with Grammy them, and you ain't let me go? I was mad. I packed my bag. I put up one toy. I think I had a He-Man toy in it. It's a real story. One little small bag I had. I run behind the church. The church, less than 300 feet away from my house. I hide behind the church, sit hungry. It was 6.30. My Grammy's, my Grammy called, baby, I cook you want something to eat. <laughs> and I say, yeah. Then I come right back home. I couldn't get far. I've recognized that one thing about this Bahama land, I can't go far. Because my heart here, I believe in y'all. I don't think that I was birthed where I was birthed, when I was birthed just to let this thing go. So when I speak and I say what I say, I believe hard in this. We need to get to community. Y'all stop jiving and joking. You content because you could pay for a little piece of wall around your house. The wall only three feet tall. You wilding out. If you, <laughs> you wall, you, you say, I, we could jump over your wall, okay? But that's what all you could afford. But now you got this mindset that this is my castle. And you realize that you ain't leaving nothing in the proverbial kingdom for your children to have. Not even this castle. Nobody could do nothing with this house. When you're dead, we still got seven years of mortgage to pay on this. Hmm? You was trying to hold out so you could live to pay off the mortgage to give your children something. You pass away too soon. 
the only way we could get to productivity and growth and push past any political malarkey, FNM, PLP, COI, DNA, QRST, FBI, CID, it don't matter. The only way we could get past the alphabets is if we look within ourselves and get to community. And it seems as though the only way we get there is with more deprivation. Do we need to be squeezed? I think it's time for us to get together. You're wilding out. Telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hey, buddy, what are you saying? I good, man. What's happening? Man, listen, I love your show, man. It's because, you know, when I'm driving the bus, I have to pull on the side to talk to you. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Um, I tried to find that word. Um, I, I, I have to put it on the side. Like, we so laid back that we accept so much nonsense is that, like you say, all we want is a house and a job. That's it. And everybody knows that. Investors know that. The government knows that. It's like we're not hungry to get more or to get higher. You understand what I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. we satisfied, we complacent, and it's one little shot um, somewhere down the road. Uh, we got a job. Don't touch my kids. Don't touch my job. Don't touch my money. It's like anybody can just do us it and just give us a job and a paycheck. And when you say that, you know, remind me for, for that. It would be Alfred Gray said before they got um, um, out of the house. He said, man, just give them a job. Uh, 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 and a paycheck, and they satisfy. Mm. And that's the truth. Mm. We are so satisfied, even with the jobs today. There are some resorts in this Bahamas, I don't know if you've done any research, they're on contract. That should not be paid off in this Bahamas. Contract, only a year and a half. Some banks, even, deep, I mean, people cannot even go to bank to borrow uh, uh, money for car, money for house, because you only wait a year and a half, because most banks, they want to be in job for two years. Mm-hmm. Are you right? Absolutely. And, and, and these resorts and the government is allowing people to do up behaving people like that. Year and a half. Mm-hmm. I want to and, 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 and like you said earlier, we got our seniors. Child, at least you got a job, child. Please, no, your grandson or your daughter is getting beat up on these jobs. They're getting used on these jobs. Mm-hmm. No incentive, no retirement plan. And they just live back. I got it. And we can stop this nonsense. And somebody and governing the step of some of these resorts. Not only here, also in free force. Mm-hmm. Even if they're still signing these contracts for a year and a half, you can't get them. That's no future. Mm-hmm. I'm, praying for, I'm praying for the being in two people, sir. I'm praying that we catch ourselves mm-hmm. and knowing that we are better than what politicians think we are. My God. Have a good show, man. I love you, dog. I appreciate you, my brother. Man. He's a decent man. God bless you. Well, baby, at least you got a job. <laughs> you got a job. You, got, you can't get nothing with that. You're getting paid minimum wage for 18 months, just shy of being able to get that car from Japan that you wanted. You can't even get a Chinese car. I can't even get no amen. Hmm? And this all started when the, all the hotels in the country held their breath when it was looking at sandals. When Sandals say they're losing 14,000 gallons of water every day and we need to shut down the whole property. Man, you'll need to stop it. They set the precedence far and wide throughout the length and breadth of the country to see what the government was going to do. Somebody talked to me. And what did the government do? Pop champagne. Y'all remember that? Y'all need to stop playing. When they shut the hotel down, okay, so let's, let's, let me give you a precedent. When people moved from Crystal Palace, uh, whatever it was before, the Nassau Beach Resort, when they moved from the Nassau Beach Resort and they moved over to the Sheridan, they initially, what we call, grandfathered their years. So if you're working for the Nassau Beach Resort for 20 years and you're now working over at the Sheridan Hotel, they grandfathered. So on paper, the, the bank of the Bahamas, well, the banks, whether the bank of the Bahamas, whether it's Commonwealth, however, right? The banks recognized your years of service to the organization. Okay? It was grandfathered in. So you could still go to, though that the hotel just opened today, this new rebranding of the hotel opened just today, you could still go and the bank recognized your years of service. So they say, oh, you've been working here for 18 years. Yes. Miss Roll, we'll take care of you and get your house. 
They recognize your years of service. All right? When the sandals shut down, everyone started at zero. Talk to me. Somebody talk to me. You, you, you go to the bank, the bank stopped lending money to those persons within the hotel, and they saw the hotel as unstable. Come on, man, talk to me. As a result of what happened with the precedent set with Sandals. Now, far and wide, you can't get nothing. That's why people didn't make a decision. A great deal of people didn't decide to go back to the hotel. What did you get back to the hotel for? You can't get nothing. You might as well be out here working for yourself. You can set your own rules, set your own pace, set your, you could identify your, cu- your customers, your demographic, you could identify your product, you can do all those things, and all you have to do is be astute and commit yourself to work and make your own money. That's what you do, that's the best thing to do. Because if it is working for these people, you still can't get nothing. You're working 40 hours a week, 48 hours a week, 60 hours a week, and praying to God that you could go home with something. Now you're tired, your children don't know you, and you still ain't got no money. I can get nothing. You only need to wake up, man. And this, I can't put this on everybody, but this in my heart, it's heavy. You need to wake up, man. We are valued more than this in this Bahama land. We bigger than this, we better than this, we better than this. We are not slaves. Our forefathers didn't fight. And almost burned on Burma Road and, and did all those particular things for us to get to this position and still bend, bow, when we can fight for ours. And all it takes is telling your politicians what your expectations are. All it takes is a unified voice and a commitment to an objective that is national. Not political, national. It's got to be bigger than you bigger than your children, and bigger than your party. It's got to be big enough for your children, children's children. That's where wisdom is. A wise man leaves an inheritance for his children, children. Let me get to the next telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Yes, a Howard Challenge Johnson again. Hey, I'm going to so take sorry? a lesson from the, catechist, the former catechist of the Anglican Church, Mr. Theodore Quant. He said, take your time, but hurry up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Howard, uh, you see, you see CEOs of the of uh, of a of a food store move to a telecommunications company or a technology company, and the company excels, mm-hmm. and they pay him twenty million, thirty million dollars. And you go, how does he move from say a Walmart to being CEO of this technology company? They're not hiring him for to know the thing of the food store or the technology company. They're hiring him for his ability to bring thought leaders together to accomplish a common goal, mm-hmm. to recognize the pathway, the vision, and ideas for the country. And really. The reason I say that is that I admire this aspect of Mr. Michael Pintard, and we said we need a vision for Grand Bahama. Let me repeat what he says to me. I'm not seeking my vision. I'm seeking the vision of the nation for where the country needs to go. It's a powerful, it's a powerful thought. And for 20 years of being home, like I said to you, I know every single prime minister personally, and all the members of parliament, many of them, reach out to them, not them reach out to me, reach out to them. And so to have a leader, especially for an area for which he represents, and especially an area that's very dear to me, I've been an advocate for Grand Bahama for the 20 years, to say, I, un- I need to understand what you and others are saying that you want, what you're saying that is capable of being achieved, so that I can get the right people around you, around me. He says, I know that you don't have the ability to do it on your own, but even so is the others I can talk to to get an understanding of what needs to be done. That's the type of leadership we need, a cohesive one that reaches across the dynamics to say we have a commonality and goal to achieve. Now, when you come back to Grand Bahama, that is what is needed. Because essentially what we have is an impasse. And you, and you make mention of people saying the government, and, and, and the licensees saying this too, the government and the, and the, Grand, and the Grand Bahama Port Authority need to sit together. But according to the Hawksville Creek Agreement, the people, the licensees, and the uh, uh, Grand Bahama Port Authority needs to sit together because it's a tripod agreement and it's a trust 
for which the government is simply the custodian of, or the, or the, or the trustee of. And somehow, you know, the concept how it says governance without consent of the government is the definition of slavery. Mm. That is how we've been allowing ourselves to be governed without consent. Wow. And so now we talk about this, and I agree with you, you don't bring the intelligence that is necessary. But how about you bring the heavy lifting? You has to be there to, for the information to be transferred into them. So when the old leaves, they will have the, both the strength and the institutional knowledge. Mm-hmm. And so what we've had for five years of rebooting, we need a leadership that gets beyond that. Something I thought would be an expectation I had in Mr. Philip Brave Davis. For anybody who knows, I've been associated with Mr. Davis for a tremendously long time. And I'm totally disappointed with the level of his governance, not his capability. What has he what done? He has produced. Do what you, he's done? Do, huh? you, do you think that there's an opportunity for him to rebound, even at this, at this <laughs> juncture of a reset? Yes, but I'm saying, no, but here's what happens. He'll have to stop telling us what he could do in three years because he has squandered two years and it cannot be done. Wow. And so what happens is when you start with talking about building for the 21st century and you understand the process, that you understand that you can't watch 60 minutes in 30 seconds, right, or even in 30 minutes, because that's why they call it 60, 60 minutes. minutes yeah. so, so what happens is that it's a time process that has to be achieved, yeah. and there's not a single step that it's making. If you read the blueprint for change, it is a highly powerful digital document. Yeah. There's nothing where people say has been done. There's about 30 laws that has to be changed. I was, to be- I was waiting for um, the AG to be able to take on a strategic position and actually identify and amplify those things, but quite obvious that he wasn't prepared. See, Alan, I got to no, let you go. I got more. No, let's give me 30 more seconds. Just let me say this. There's, for us to move into the 21st century, there's 30 laws that I've documented so far that needs to be changed or created. No one has spoken to those laws yet. They've been speaking about what they're going to do. It's the same as planting seeds in Solomon's parking lot, talking about you growing like this to Mr. Pintard, but he's trying to find out where the soil is that he's to plant. Thank you, my brother. I do appreciate your telephone call. I'm uh, coming through. Let me see if I can read the next one of these texts. It says, good day. The truth you speak is an offense, but not a sin. We say we are a Christian nation, but how many of us are willing to put away our things and take up the cross of nation building? Or are we like Judas, who steals from the poor and betrays the ones who are trying to bring light to the Bahamas? The truth you speak is bleak, but if those who wish to lead us have the conviction to fast For a while, they can make positive change in the country. I want to fix this for you because a lot of people, I like what you say. I like this text. A lot of people assume fasting with the consumption of meal, food, sustenance, just ingesting food. And so they put that away. But your insatiable desire for whether it be pleasure, whether it be finances, your greed in other areas needs also a fast. And sometimes we can't get to clarity, right? It's not clarity and clear for us. Remember the clarity and clear commercials? That you thought it was a good picture until they peel it off and you say, oh my God, this is brighter. It's not clarity and clear for us until we put aside those particular things. Our insatiable desire for more and more and more and more and more. And I feel like it's hard to tell a politician that because they got to stuff their coffers. They only got a small amount of time. So I like your text. Let me see if I can read another one. Uh, Howard, uh, Howard, did, did you have the He-Man cat that he rode on? <laughs> I know. I, did I have the He-Man cat? No, I don't remember the cat. I know I had He-Man. I did have the He-Man, right? <laughs> I just give you all way too much of my business, but I feel like every one of my experiences prepared me for this moment. So don't fight me when I tell you my experiences. Let me take a next telephone call. Call you on the line with his live. Go ahead. Call you on the line with his live. Go ahead. Hey, what's happening? All's well, man. What's happening with you? I am okay, man. You take your pressure pills this morning, but I, I take mine. I don't know pressure. I ain't got no pressure. Listen, um, what 
Einstein says that if you continue to do the same thing over and over again, expect a different results. What did he say? You got to be insane. You got to be insane, Talk right? Let me tell you something. C. Allen is my boy. Right, and I listen to him all the time, and he's an extremely intelligent man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But my Grammy tells me, he ain't what is inside of a man that they file him, you know, is what comes out. You see why Freeport look like behind the back of the bar? Mm-hmm. Because he just said all that good thing he was saying is now, Pintad is the man. He's a lover of my soul. <laughs> You think you need to stop it. You, you need to stop it. You need to stop it. I see you, you spam. I see Alan is my boy. That is he tell me I don't know him. I ain't got you know him. I know what you say. I hear you what you say. It. You think he's serious? They, you think they serious? Uh, 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 um, but I, I don't know. Them? Listen, I, I have to. I Okay. I see C. Allen's able to be able to lay out the landscape. He talked to us about his relationship with the former prime minister. He has relationship with the former prime minister, both uh, Perry Christie and... Um, um, Howard. Howard. I yes. need you to go to India. He has relationship, I, but I, I feel like he looks at Hold on, Howard. Howard, we, it's not another 50 years at the same food says, No, sir. We didn't do 50 years for that. I ain't going into this. My mind has so already you, been which, made what you think up. we should do? What do you think we should do from this point We forward? got to change the free national movement and the progressive liberal party. Now, how we decide to do that, just let's don't go with none of them. Because Pintard is a part of the problem. He is acting the way he's supposed to stay in the same way brave, acting in opposition and, and menace in opposition and all of them in opposition. That is exactly the role Pintard play, man. Wow. So for C. Allen to say something like that, man, man maybe he's too, maybe he's too intelligent. You understand? I appreciate we don't you. Need, we don't need this for another 50 years, man. And, and in case C. Allen don't know, Pintard, people them, is from Cat Island. Mm-hmm. They bring them people from Cat Island. Need to stop. Look how you trying to pull the conspiracy together. I appreciate you. I know conspiracy. I'm from Cat Island, too. That's why I know. Well, how you could go against the Cat Island people if you didn't put everything in the I room? ain't going against them. I don't do foolish steps. Okay. Cat Island people do, most of us don't do foolish steps. Okay, praise God. You see, God. let me tell you the, 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 the duplicitousness in someone like a Pentad. Mm-hmm. Pentad playing the role. He didn't have everything for Lincoln saying him. I'm brave. I'm doing it. But when it came time to go to the coronation, he jump up, sky is so on, everybody get dressed. But they talk about and they go on. He go on over there, then come back and the ask for how, how much money you spent on the tax base. Well, but I can he, let you he, you need to why stop. the world he didn't ask that before he go on. You need to stop. Come on, see Allen. I can tell you what I appreciate your telephone call. I can tell you what Fred Mitchell says. It's just politics. That's just what it is. It's just politics. Now you, the Bahamian people, you the voting populace need to be able to push past and see through the politics. That's why I do my best when I'm in this space to push past all the talking points to see the heart of a man. So you might ask me why I structure my show like this, why I do it like this, how would you got to do this, boom, boom, boom. I do my best to find out if these men and women that sit with me can put conviction on the table. That's it. Let's see if I can be able to uh, read one more two of these texts before we get out of here. So it says, Bahamians are weaklings. Not all, but all, but most are. Said jokey leaders and jokey citizens. Uh, tell C. Allen when Pintard wins, he probably won't even talk, wouldn't even take his calls. Look how Minis turned cat guts and was so humble in opposition. Sucking my teeth. This a text is coming through. So he says, uh, okay, I can read that one later, right? So it says, uh, it is not the political party, it's the leader, the driver. It says, the PRP and the FNM are the cars, the COI is the car. Show me the driver to convince me that C. Allen, me and C. Allen, to get in. Shame 
that the caller didn't say that he is a, he's a supporter or not. I ain't getting in people's business. Guys, that's the show for today. I want to thank you so much for being able to tune in, man. Uh, I do my best to kind of be able to upheaval, to upheave and bring out some of the convictions that I think to lay roots in our country. This political malarkey is the love vine of the fruit that exists for the prosperous, beautiful country that is the Bahamas. All this political, neo-colonial concept, that's just love vine. That's hiding the true fruit of who we are as a nation. And all I do, every time I get a chance, go to the tree, pull the love vine out, throw the little ball and throw it aside. That's all I could do. That's, I could do my part. I'm sure I can't take all the love vine off. But my objective is to do my part. The question is, are you doing your part? I'm a believer that if I carry my convictions with me, that I possibly can be able to make a, a, a change. If you're in politics, if you're in private sector, if you are in the unions or wherever you are, just carry your convictions with you. Convictions for national growth and development. And understand we are building a Bahama land. Stop being content with your expensive grape leaf on it. I see all, you all, um, uh, you got that on there. Uh, you well a whole grape leaf on your, on, on your fence. Your gate costs more than your whole house, but you need that to be able to give you the mindset that is a castle. But you're not in the castle unto yourself. You still got to come out here and live with us. Put that mindset aside and understand that it's time for us to build community. I thank you guys so very kindly for tuning in with us today. It's a beautiful day, beautiful show. I don't know if you could take a little dip, put your foot in the sea, but your Grammy say sometimes, baby, you just got to put your foot in the sea. Put your foot in the sea, guys. Enjoy the Bahama Land and work on what we envision that can be, that must be, that will be for the future. Nation with Howard Grant, 96.9 FM Radio. Guys, we're going to see you tomorrow, God Spare Life, right here, live and in full effect, 12 o'clock. Have a beautiful day, guys. Have a beautiful evening and do so responsibly. Foundation. The foundation. 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 The foundation. The foundation. The Foundation of Heart Grants is brought to you by Alive ML Foods Limited, Bahamas Welding and Fire, Break Bank, the Deposit Insurance Corporation, the Digital Transformation Unit, Freeport News, the Ministry of Agriculture Marine Resources, Monster Electric Motors, and Scotia Bank. Found, 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 found.